Okay, we're going to finally get to the back of the bike here after screwing around for a couple hours on the uh, oil system, so a little after 10 now. So, so far no leaks. Alright, so we got our fat wheel we worked on here last week, over the weekend, whatever the hell it was. I'm going to try to get that into the back of the bike here and see what we're going to do to make it fit. So, stock application right now, so i we'll try to make things to work. First thing I do is look at our chain line, which is based on our sprocket to sprocket. Eyeball test works pretty good usually. Just kind of sight down the sprocket. See what you got to look at down there. I'm gonna blow up. So you look down your sprocket teeth there, and the other teeth should be right up in front up there where they belong if they line up. They basically are out of vision if you're lined up correctly. And you can also see there's about a half inch gap between the sprocket and the tire. Remember there's no chain. Chain's going to take up probably a quarter inch of that. At least three sixteenths minimum, probably a quarter. So we only got about a quarter inch of a gap on that tire right now. <clears throat> and this rim here is an inch wider than the one that's on the bike. <clears throat> so we're pretty sure it's going to spread. Just a matter how much. But we do have some room right here to work with over here in the fender and this fender needs to be bent out of the way a little bit so i have to do a little peening on that to knock it over here and keep it that way so we'll use some tools that people don't like they're called hammers so we can deal with that probably easy to deal with that right now stick something in there and beat on it pretty much how you do it so here's something to stick between a fender and a doing and this is something to beat on it with if you're lucky it'll do what you want to do bent at that time and there's a big whoopee in it all right and we're up this time start on this piece of crap. I guess the first thing to do is get the tire off the ground would be a big improvement. So that means let's jack the thing up. There we go. Just enough the tire spins all you need. Get the uh, axle pull out nice and evenly. Okay, this has uh, lug nuts on it, so you gotta deal with lug nuts, which is this kind of junk. I forget if these are Harley lug nuts or aftermarket lug nuts, so different wrenches for different applications. So those are right through these holes over here. So I'm out of the way of my feet so I can work. Are they blowing up or not? Yep, we're unblown. We're unblown! Okay, this is an aftermarket wrench. That's an aftermarket wrench that used to be look like this on here, see? You see how that works? This is modified to spin through here without dragging through, through the hub in here, actually. And this is a genuine Harley wrench, which only works with genuine Harley lugs because it's bigger diameter. 
that does not fit in there. So, not Harley. Inferior Japanese product. Probably not even Japanese, it's probably Taiwan or China. Ah. Put it through the right hole. <clears throat> See why I made a tool like this. See, it's made like that for a reason. See, it comes out through the wheel, through the frame kicks right here so I can push on it without jamming myself in this or this or anything else that might be in the way, including like there's a muffler that comes through here a lot of times. That's why we make it like that. Maybe I should patent it so I can sell them. I got the money I can make. All three or four of myself. Who's going to be the first one to steal my design? Okay, now you go to this wrench, it's already turned down, so it spins freely. So the reason it's, it's like that is so that right through the hub here. See how nicely it turns now without digging into the hub? Until it gets about there and starts coming into it again. That means I need to modify it some more. Go ahead and cut some more of it away. Yeah, about another half inch would work. Okay. You can also go and go over here, make it round here, so you beat up the frame. That custom paint job that's on there. Some people care about that jump. Not me. That means it's been worked on. Somebody actually was riding and did maintenance on it. That's why it's got those scrape marks in there. Notice how freely these uh, come out of here. Probably because I've already worked on all this stuff before. Thing. I'll try to keep it up there. Alright, that failed again. I also failed to uh, let the air out of the tire here too. That's the next thing you gotta do. When you're racing, you gotta have metal valve stem covers. It's metal. It just looks like it's dirty and crappy looking. It actually is dirty and crappy looking. It's alright though. Dumbass inspector comes by and says, Oh, you got rubber valstin caps. You, tell me, you dumbass, open your damn eyes up. That's half the fun. Yeah. Get stuff out of your way when you're done. The ear out to get the tire out. It's whistling at me. Okay, where is my chingus? Okay, this is called a, a flap, a fender flap. It goes up. So you have to jack the bike up 20 miles in the air. See? Just like that. And it's off. Fender can go up. All old bikes have this option. Only new bikes don't. See, look at that. And it goes up against it. It makes it puts a big scrape up here in the fender too. And the license plate comes up and hits it like that. 
They didn't over-engineer it. But it does go up high enough for your tire to come out, see? Rolls right out. They quit doing that in 1980. They figured they didn't need to change tires anymore, I guess. They never failed after that. Of course, they were still good years. They still sucked. Okay, now, you can get the axle out to get the rest of the way out. You might need a hammer to do that. And maybe a punch. Another hammer. All right, so I'll go over here on this side of the bike. Camera out of the way so I can physically do something. And what I forget, I forgot the cross on it. A lot of those around here. That was not gorilla torque. Okay, now this holds the brake on. Theoretically, I shouldn't have to take this off. So, maybe we'll find out if we do. Flies out nicely. I like that. Okay, let's go see if it'll come out. Okay, camera goes over here on my way. Of course, this is in my way over here now. Okay, let's see if the tire will come out. First thing to pull the out. That comes out nice. I must have worked on that. Okay, now we get the wheel out of the hub, like that. And if we're lucky, it'll come out. Of course, it doesn't want to come out. Okay, so you got to overcome the interference point. See brake drum and bearings and studs. Tire hits up there, hits over there, hits up in the front. It's over here in the frame. That's why you let the air out. So it gives you a little extra half inch of clearance, which allows the wheel to come out. Now this is a lot wider than a stock tire also, which does not help. Now it doesn't want to come past the tire. The tire's too big, too fat. So we have this big bolt right here. And we have this big fat brake drum right over there. We got stuff right over there to keep the tire from coming out. You know, I got the air out of the tire. You don't want to come out. If you wiggle a little bit, that compresses the tire a little bit as you come out and it comes out. Pull your trunk, the tire's out. So you don't have to jack the bike up any more than that, see? Basically a height of a 4x6 or something is all you need. Okay, so there's the old tire. Our new tire, old wheel. This tire is going to go on the other wheel. Okay, new wheel. See how this works. Now I want to look at that brake drum first. I looked at brake drums before. I concluded that you couldn't put the late drum on the early bike. But I'd like to revisit that. Because I don't care if it's not supposed to work. I still want it to fit. I know there's a reason why I said it wouldn't work last time. Okay, what's the difference in these damn things? I think there's a height difference, I recall. Okay, so you can see how they already drag on a stock brake. Okay, when you put these at the same height, what's the difference? 
This one might be slightly deeper, and I think this is deeper than this one. So I think it's a height issue, depth issue. Now you see how the brake drum is all blue in there? Do here, see how it turns blue from heat? Somebody was using the brakes. They were probably slowing down from drag racing. These things don't uh, transfer heat very well, they just get hot real quick. It's not a lot of mass here to absorb moist, absorb heat. These are a lot heavier, they absorb more heat. So it looks like a depth issue to me is the reason it wouldn't fit before. Where the hell did this wrench come from? I guess I do have two of those there. Damn, I had two wrenches the whole time. Look at that. Oh well. There's a depth indicator right here. Let's use this one, it's shorter. Okay. Okay, we're all the way down. We're right on the edge of the brake line of material, see? This one here. It's up in the air, see? See, it's up in the air right there. Where'd my light go? See, it's a 3 16 above the brake drum. See, over here it hits. Now, how much of that is brake drum and how much of this is... Uh, the lip right here. Brake drum's actually that high. And there's about an eighth of an inch difference also in that. Alright, so there's your difference. Now, if you were to take these shoes over here and narrow them up a little bit. See they're real narrow right here? Actually, you can probably trim these down a little bit and that might actually work. These are crappy aftermarket shoes. Look how much the cam is open just to make them work. It'd work better if you uh, put a well of some shims in there and close up that gap a bunch. And make the brakes work better. Racing stuff, you want to do that. Okay, this goes about a hundred thou past the lip of the backing plate. Or this one here, <coughs> pretty much flush. That's about a sixteenth from going past the backing plate. See how it overhangs the backing plate here. That's your difference. So 58s run real narrow brake linings. Looks like we need narrow brake linings. Now I haven't tried the 63 drum. We're only trying the 58 drum. Let's try a different drum. We got a selection of drums over here to choose from. You just have to find the right one. Stack over here for mock up. Uh, don't scratch up his front, he'll get pissed. Okay, this is a nice thick one. Oh, cut his gas tank though. Well, actually, it's my gas tank still, so it doesn't matter. Okay, this one's Mark 63 on it. This is a 67 because it's got bearings in it. Let's see. They're different styles. See, so this takes a ball bearing all the way through. This here, there's no bearings in it. This has a big lip cut out of it. And 63s don't have no lip. They don't cut the lip. Now somebody cut this drum off here though, so it's not stock either. What's this one here? This is another screwed up one. What's this one? We're running out of drums. Yeah, that's a crappy one. Okay, so this one here is a 63. It's been modified or something. Maybe it's a 58 that's been all butchered. Who knows? It's hard to tell. 
guess I have to find a 63 drum someplace. I know where there's one at. There's one right over there on a the wheel somewhere. Not that bike, that's a Sportster. Oh, it's on that bike. He's already together though. Yeah, I knew there was one floating around. Yeah, I got some more drums floating around. Just gotta go find them. That's the easiest way to get back there. Not this way. We're gonna go in this way. It's dark back here. There's some more junk wheels. Yeah, we're cruising. More motors. More junk. Alright. Down in there somewhere some drums. I'm thinking that's a 63 drum right there because it looks like one. Yep. No sprocket on it though. That one over there looks like mechanical brake. Hard on the fingers. Yep, there you go. Look how tall that one is. That's deep. What else is in there? It says 67. You know, one of 67. Put that one in there with a sprocket on. Oh, that's a heavy bastard. Oh. That's another herb bone. And earlier chewed up. It's the same difference. Hard to tell. Definitely chewed up. This one down here is being a good one. Alright, we'll use this one. Mock up. Yeah, more, more race bikes. Where do all these race bikes come from? Just free break on the back of that pan right there we just passed. I know that. All right, let's see what the difference is on this one. Ooh, look how tall that one is. Oh, camera's down. Okay, this is full depth, just like the mechanical brake would be. Okay. Hitting on something. It's not even close. Oh, it's hitting on the bracket plate. That's what the difference is on that. Okay, so that has to be this has to be cut away for clearance. work. Have to look like that. So we had another one back here to look like that. I wonder if it's the same thing. Hmm. Could be. We did have that one sitting back there, don't we? This one's definitely too tall. Well, it's not too tall, it's the diameters and the Spot and the thing. The next thing you gotta figure out is what the height of the sprocket is flange wise. If there are any differences in any of that. Seeing that the Harley never changed their chain line, I would say that they're all the same. It would never work if they were mixed matched. So that part would have to be the same on all of them. There's too much interchangeability of the drums. Back over into the hole. Where's that brake drum that we had over here? That butchered one? Yeah, the one that the brake was in the back right there, guys. Yeah. yeah, that's the one. Yep, that's the 
59A. 58A. There might be another 58. Yep, 58 crap. I believe I don't have any 63. The 66 brake drum is laying around. Unless the 58A is. A little measuring device. Nope. Another short one. All right, so. It looks like in order to use the brake drum, we're going to have to cut the shoes down and make it work, or just put the old one back on. That's the same conclusion I came to before. Things don't work. This one might work. We have to cut it out. But the height might be good. Not sure. There's no way of measuring exactly what the height is, but it's close to the same height. You know where the sprocket goes. So I'll probably make it work. So we might be able to take a 63 drum and cut it down to fit, maybe. I'm not sure. Have to do more technical measurements than this. But for now, it doesn't fit. Same conclusion I came to last time I screwed it. But I can make it work if I cut those shoes down over there. It will fit. But for now, this works too. To screw with it. Once that brake drum is freed up, yet. Now, the problem with this is you spin these darn rivets at a high RPM. So, you know, you tell if you got tight brake drums on there or not, sprocket, hit it with a hammer. You know how solid that is? That means they're still doing their job. It sounds real dull and with that's no good. You definitely have a spinning sprocket. Can't go fast with your sprocket spinning. I guarantee that right now. Okay, so now we got to figure out how to get the big ass wheel in there. It's one of these. Let's see. The first problem is is the rim. The rim don't fit. Big ass bolts running away. It's hitting right there and we're hitting right over there. These are kind of close. Just means you have to walk it in there, that's all that means. Wasn't pretty easy with no tire. Good luck on doing that with the tire on it. Okay. Oh, we can't use this axle. That's all right. This is a Harley axle. We cannot use a Harley axle anymore. Use an aftermarket piece of crap axle. I do with a piece of crap Harley axles or aftermarket. I think I stuck them up here when my spokes hit them. Everybody wants to see a tour of the shop. There you go. How'd it go? Is it quick enough for you? One of these is a rear. That is not it. That'd be the one right there. One rear axle. Let me get some junk. I've seen my flywheel pile before. That's only one of them though. 
All right, we're back. Camera keeps falling down. Too much rough housing. Okay, this is a one aftermarket axle made like old style. One version of an old style. There's multiple versions of old style stuff. Okay. Here's the reason why you have to use an aftermarket axle. When you use a Temkin hub, that is. Okay, so it goes on there like this. See how the axle neck down's right here? And all the way up to here. And stepped right. This is one size. It steps from here to here a little bit and it steps up again from here to here. And at the very end, it's got another step in it. Okay, this has the same step there. Then it's this size all the way over to here. Then it drops down and goes down one size. The Timken bearings low right here. Now, if you do that over here, you're on a small part of the axle. That means this bearing here is floating around on the axle like this, which means your wheel's loose. I don't care if the axle's tight, the wheel's loose. So you have to use the aftermarket wax axle because it's straight all the way across. Timken bearings fit. That's why you have to do that. Yeah, look how nice that went in there. It's hard to believe it fit that nicely. And go on the other side. See what the axle looks like. It looks like it's really long. See, just because it fits one way doesn't mean it fits some other way. And the next problem is you want to make sure that that step doesn't bottom out inside our start or sleeve, which we can't tell at this point. But if it does, it'll be a false torque. That means that this nut will be tight and it'll be loose. Okay. There's a dragon already. Okay. I'm going to go back over here. We need to put at least three lug nuts in to pull it in square. One problem, these don't fit in the hub. That makes it really hard to put the lugs in. So before I powder coat the other set, I have to open up the holes. And it's either the hub or the star cover. The cover is slightly smaller than the hole. Some drag on that thing. Okay. Two across. Still doesn't fit. Just double checking. Dragging on the shoes there. Right. The brake drag. Okay, now the part that we were concerned about the not fitting was, in case you couldn't see, this is supposed to go through the hub right here. You can see how it doesn't go through. Right back side here. See, I wonder if my blog. Yeah, it does not fit through the. the uh, it does not fit through the hub hole. Or the hole in the hub, I should say. And then the star hub overlaps it also. So, so they made the holes too small here to put lugs in. Or maybe these aftermarket lugs are too thick. I don't know. I've had that problem before. Okay, so there's our wheel. <clears throat> now, how centered is it right now? Looks to me like we are slightly to the left. Just a tick.
the straight edge around here. There's a straight edge. Okay, so that goes all up into the fender. Obviously, we have lots of room on this side. Let go over this side. A little more clearance issues over here because we got <clears throat> we have stuff in our way, like a chain guard, to keep this from checking it like this all the way. But we can obviously check a little bit. It appears to be about the same. Okay, so we're about equal. About equal clearancing. Okay, now let's look at our sprocket clearance. So right now, with the rim, we got about three quarters of an inch of clearance. So that means we have a half inch of clearance to the chain, maybe five eighths from the side of the rim. Okay, so now we need to figure out how fat the rim is. We know it's a four inch rim, but the rim's more than four inches wide on the outside. So let's go measure it. Looks like we've got about five and a quarter, maybe five and three sixteenths. So these things aren't consistently round, so they're the same width. And then about three sixteenths, okay. So now we can go over this tire over here and measure how fat this tire is. Now right now it's on that skinny little rim. So skinny little rims are give you bogus numbers. Five and a half. So that's three eighths of an inch difference between the rim and the tire. You cut that in half is three sixteenths. So you got three sixteenths to move over, which should be good. And now how much is this going to spread when you put an inch more to it? It's not going to spread a half inch. Aside, it'd be one inch. It's not going to be the full width. But if you, you know, if it did go a half inch, then we have a problem. But if we were three sixteenths less than that, which would still be three quarters of an inch wider tire than what it is right now, which is hard to believe it go that much. That's about how much chain clearance we have right now on our to tire. So, so right now we're pretty close. I can probably cheat that over a little bit if I wanted to. Further. Looks like I'm already cheated pretty good right now. We got about a quarter inch of clearance up inside the fender. I mean, you weren't even sure what I was doing. Crappy camera go. Okay, so you put it up on the rim, you go side to pull it straight aside. You get under the tire that you got a lot of clearance. You get up in the tire and it starts gets into it. So we don't know how big the tire is in diameter, so we'll have to guess. Okay, this one here doing the same thing. A little bit tighter. So right now it's all set slightly to the right, which is what I did. So I think we can continue with the with the rim in the same spot, and it probably will work halfway decently. So until we put a tire on there, we don't know. But anyway, that's it. Definitely fills up the fender with a big ass wheel in there. Okay, so I think we're probably going to be okay with where it's at. So that means I can go ahead and true up the wheel. Tighten the spokes up all the way up on the damn thing. And uh, put a tire on it and see if it fits. If it doesn't fit, then we either got to cut the tire or we got to move, take it all back off, move the wheel over a little bit and play with it some more. But initially right now it looks like we're close. So I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy with that. And like I said, if I had to, I can cheat the chain over a little bit on the front sprocket in the back if I wanted to. Could gain a little extra. But you'd have to offset the wheel that way because if you moved everything this way, you would have to move the tire more that way relative to where the hub is. So you still have to re-offset it. But uh, anyway, that's where we're at right now. So I think we're good to go on that. Scooby don't like me working all night. It's 11 o'clock almost now. Got my new clock. 
like my new vintage clock. Might be able to drop it twice before it breaks it. All right, so there's a the black rear wheel. Looks a lot better than that stupid ass chrome thing over there, doesn't it? I hate chrome wheels. The problem now is that brake drum is chrome. Ugh. That's ugly. I'm still in the crappy cast iron ones over there. It'd be a lot better looking. But. All right, that's it for now. I'll play this with another day. In the meantime, we're going to see what our oil leak does. I think it's leaking yet? It appears to have no oil leaking out of it right now. And it looks like the three bond sealer is stopped oozing also. So, so far so good. The repairs are holding. Hopefully they continue to hold and don't continue to be a pain in the butt. But anyway, the rear wheel looks pretty nice. All right, that's it for tonight.